Welcome to Madison City Channel's Know Your Candidates interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm your interviewer, Gail Bliss, and I would like to introduce Kristen Slack, running for Alter in District 19. As we begin, I'd like you to give an opening statement as to your educational, vocational, and civic experience you have, which qualifies you for this office, and why you are running for Alder. Great, thank you, Gail. Um, so I have lived in the Madison area for 23 years. I started out on the east side, moved to Stoughton for about uh, nine, 10 years, and have been back here on the west side of Madison for about nine years. Um, I'm a professor of social work at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. That's where I've been working the whole time I've lived here. Um, and I uh, focus or specialize in analyzing social policies um, with a particular emphasis on um, anti-poverty policies. Um, I'm a big passionate advocate for protecting the environment and fighting climate change. Um, and one of the reasons, um, and I, I'm also the owner of a business. I have an educational technology business that I started um, here in Madison too. Um, one of the reasons I decided to run for Alder is because um, I think that there is a need to look at multiple potential solutions to the many problems um, that we're facing in Madison and as a country. Um, there isn't just one solution to a problem and uh, finding the right solution for Madison that creates the most equitable outcomes um, is a priority for me. I've always had this lens as a social worker of um, equity and social justice, and I bring that to every um, issue that I think about. Um, and so I would like to bring that to uh, that lens to the city government as well. Um, I don't have experience with, um, with local politics as much um, in my role as a social work uh, researcher and uh, faculty member. I have uh, been involved in several national initiatives um, related to uh, enhancing voting rights and um, uh, providing policy solutions to, uh, in to interest groups at the federal level around prevention. Thank you. What actions or programs would you support to enhance public safety in Madison? And in particular, what is your position on the use of body cameras by Madison police officers? Yeah, so I think first, you know, I, I just want to say that um, violent crimes, thefts, burglaries, all of these things are symptoms of larger structural problems in society. Um, that just make it hard, um, really hard for people to live their lives in, in, in ways that are inequitable. Um, and if we were to address those root causes of a lot of these, these problems you're talking about, um, we'd have much smaller systems for addressing them because there wouldn't be as much of a need. So this prevention lens is, is paramount um, when it comes to public safety and we don't spend nearly enough um, resources on prevention um, as opposed to reacting to social problems. So I just want to start by saying that, um, you know, despite that that I think is probably very widely accepted, prevention is better than reacting after the fact, um, we keep expanding infrastructure um, for reacting to social problems um, like crime and like, um, you know, thefts and burglaries. And we don't put that serious effort into the prevention piece. Um, but I do think while we try to flip the script, which I do think we have been making some progress on, it is still important to have a police force um, that is adequate and that can, um, you know, uh, be there when when they're needed. But that doesn't mean um, we don't pay attention to the way we recruit and who we hire and how we train uh, officers and make sure that we're finding officers and keeping officers that truly have the lens of wanting to rebuild trust with communities, establish those long lasting partnerships with communities and really wanna help. Um, there are good people in, uh, uh, in every system and um, we need to do, I think a better job, not only there, but in healthcare and education and other places to make sure that people understand and appreciate the history of the systems they work in, the flaws that are currently there and are committed to, to rooting out those flaws and, and trying to fix them. On the body cams, um, you know, there's a, a, a huge debate around those and I'm not versed in the evidence behind them, but I do think there's 
there's arguments um, around their utility for accountability um, with respect to incidents that happen. And without them, there's a lot we would have never known or seen as a public um, uh, with respect to things that have gotten a lot of attention in the media and, and led to some change. So at the moment, I do think they are a useful tool. I think they have to be used very carefully with the right guardrails in place um, so that they don't create any additional harm. What do you see as the most important environmental issues the city needs to address and how will you do so? So I think we've been making some good progress on efforts to try to reduce uh, carbon emissions. Um, but there's another a part of the equation on fighting climate change, and that has to do with protecting and enhancing the natural resources and environment that we have and expanding it. Um, and that relates to drawing down the legacy load of carbon in the atmosphere. That's another part of the equation. And I just don't think we're doing enough around that. It involves um, much bigger efforts to protect the lakes. It, it involves managing stormwater differently. It involves protecting tree canopies and expanding them and using natural plants where we can. Um, and so that's an area that I think we need to pay more attention to, give, particularly given in Ma the Madison area's history as um, environmental, with environmental stewardship. Um, so it's, it's, there's not a single solution. And I think we're, we're not putting as much attention into that part of the effort that is really critical. What is your position on increasing the pay for alders? That's a, that's a tough one and hard to answer from the outside. Um, I've heard both sides of the argument. Um, I um, am I'm interested in learning more about it and I think I am in favor of increasing the pay. I'm not in favor um, of increasing the, um, the duration of these positions, especially to four years. Um, maybe to three. Um, and I don't know if raising it to the amount proposed is the right solution. So I do have to learn more about the, the sort of advantages and disadvantages of that um, with a tight budget and an increasing structural deficit. So we have to keep those in mind too. What, if anything, do you think the city should be doing to support economic development? I think there's... Um, a lot of great stuff going on around Madison. I've been fortunate to be part of a startup community, um, you know, um, of, of, of entrepreneurs and have gotten to know a lot of great people doing really amazing things. Um, but there's, uh, it's very tough, you know, access to capital is, is a difficult issue. Um, the cost of having a physical office space or location um, right along with the affordability for housing is also a problem for a lot of business owners. Um, and I'm, I'm very interested in supporting small businesses and helping create new ones, finding pathways to do that, but also to, to attracting new businesses to Madison, particularly those that align with who we are as a city um, and what we stand for. And the, one of the things that comes to mind is um, the environmental stewardship and are there businesses that sort of help align our values with, um, um, with those types of, of um, businesses. And then um, to also um, make sure that we're spreading these businesses around the city. Um, I don't think they all need to be in one location. People choose to live all over this city and access to jobs in different parts of the city um, is something I think we need to put more focus on as well. How do you see racial disparities impacting constituents in your district? And are there any actions the city should take to address those? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I've worked working at the university and sometimes in some leadership positions, there are many ways that our practices create and exacerbate inequities that we may not even think about or notice as a system or as an organization. Um, finding not only the large obvious things that we already know about disparities in maternal and child health or general health outcomes and access to housing, especially paths to home ownership and building equity. Um, um, the way the, the disparities that exist exist with the uh, carceral system, for instance, um, and cash bail. Um, 
those are all problems that have been widely talked about, but I also think that there are inequities in access to services. Um, sometimes there's hurdles or administrative burdens that just make things really difficult for some um, to access the things they need. And so taking a look at the city and the way it works with kind of a user experience lens and making sure we talk to residents about what would make things easier and what has made things difficult for them, I think can help improve the way we deliver services and think about planning um, for the future. Community engagement is a huge part of my answer to this. Community engagement cannot be an afterthought. It has to be proactive. We have to invite residents um, and make a special efforts to do outreach to residents who uh, often don't have a voice at the table into planning decisions, into budgeting priorities. Um, and we need to make sure we can be transparent with our communication um, to residents so that we are accountable on the policy decisions we make. Um, so community engagement is part of my platform. I wanna improve those practices at the city and make them much more equitable. What are the most critical issues that you see facing the people in your district? And how would you address these? I think, um, act, you know, home ownership, um, finding affordable homes. I was just at a conference um, and I was talking with a former student of mine who had been living in Chicago and wanted to move back to Madison, um, she and her husband and two kids. And they could not find, after searching for months, an affordable starter home here. And so they ended up moving to Columbus, Ohio. Um, and I think that's happening a lot. Um, I think people are shut out of this pathway to home ownership. And I worry a bit about um, the amount of development and emphasis we're putting on rental units. Um, and how this new rezoning um, policy is going to affect the housing market, the home ownership market. market. Um, we already know that there's a sort of missing middle with our with our housing stock, um, and renting forever is is often not in a family's or a person's plan. So, so providing more access and ways to think about making home ownership more affordable, I think, is a is a big issue for my district. Um, and then I also think, you know, making things more walkable, making things easier to get to. Um, but I don't think that's unique to my district. I think every district and every neighborhood wants that. Um, and so making sure that we have sort of mini centers of very comprehensive services and access to things that make our lives more livable in a smaller area um, is also important to a lot of people. Um, not everybody works or wants to live downtown, um, but they do want their neighborhoods to have amenities and services and um, be easy to use and access. What would you like to say to the viewing audience as we complete this interview? Yeah. Um, so as I said before, as a as a social worker and just you know as a person, I. I look at everything for its structural and systemic root causes. I don't believe there is one single solution to a problem. I believe there's many that need to be considered. I don't think we should um, treat people who bring different suggestions towards solving a problem as bad people. I think we need to have honest conversations about an array of ways to approach a problem and what works best for Madison and what works best for, for individual communities. Um, so I will bring that lens um, um, and that effort to the council if I'm elected. Um, and I am particularly interested in exploring ways we can uh, find solutions that get at the, the root causes of problems that maybe don't just create band-aids for things or temporary solutions, but how do we actually um, make things better for all people in a more permanent way? Um, and that's my hope as, as uh, if I get to serve as Alder. I want to thank Kristen Slack for speaking with us and the viewing audience for taking time to know your candidates. I want to remind everyone that the primary election day is Tuesday, February 21st, and the general election is Tuesday, April 4th. As with every election, please vote. On behalf of Madison City Channel and the League of Women Voters of Dane County, I thank you for joining us.